Hello everyone! I haven't said that one in a while, have I? My little like singing hello. So, we're back at it. I have just finished filming. Here we go. I'm about to... Sorry, I've just got my cord. Anyway, for my laptop. I just finished filming my English podcast, my German podcast, and was literally thinking to myself as I was kind of putting everything away, I am so tired, all I want to do is just knit. But during my podcast, I freaked myself out because I realised I only have about two weeks to get my dark water sweater done if I want it done during the time of the knit along. So I was like, cool, need to work on that. And then as I was about to sit down to knit, I was like, oh, well, I'm going to knit it. I might as well film myself knitting it. Here I was complaining about how tired I am and don't want to film anymore. And <laughs> she sits down and she films another video. But to be honest, I'm probably just going to film a couple of clips of me filming. And then once I get to a certain stage, like I've kind of done before. Well, I think I only did it with my first video. Uh, so I'll show you where I'm at because it is a bit different to the last video you would have seen but if you've watched the podcast you would have seen most of this already so I'm maybe a third of the way through the color work now I think I'm close to halfway and we're actually starting to get something interesting so we're getting these like arrows sort of popping up I know I should change you can see it on the back here I should change to a larger cable but I'm feeling extra lazy today, so I won't be doing that. And I've knitted a bit more than you would have seen on the podcast because I stopped sort of halfway through-ish through the podcast because the qualifying round for, well, the qualifying race for the Bahrain Grand Prix was on and... I don't know what my parents did to me, but I'm fully into Formula One now. I love it. Especially after watching the Netflix kind of series that they've done. It's so cool getting to see the drivers and hear them all talk about it. And while I do think there's some issues with Formula One. Because obviously it's... Not every... How do I put this? It's hard to put together a team. It is hard to become a Formula One driver. And most of the time, it's going to be wealthy, privileged people. And I should specify men. And that's obviously not okay. But I, it is also still very enjoyable. And it's interesting to hear the drivers talk. It's also interesting to see kind of the tension between the different teams, but then also the, um, hang on, wait, what am I up to with my knitting? But then also the, when drivers, you know, move to a different team, the tension it causes and things like that. It, I find it so interesting. And the Netflix series does a really good job of that, but also it kind of just shows you some behind the scenes stuff that I think a lot of people aren't really aware of and but yeah so anyway got completely distracted what was I even talking about who knows well someone will know I don't know anymore oh that's right and so I was watching <laughs> the qualifying round uh for the Bahrain Grand Prix, which is the first one of the season, it used to always be Melbourne, but because of COVID and Australia not really letting anyone in, fair enough. Uh, they've moved it, I think, to Melbourne, I think is one of the last ones this year, if not the last one. And so Bahrain is first and had the qualifying round and I was knitting on this during that. And I'd already talked about it in my podcast, so it meant after I finished filming my English one, I'd actually had some progress on this project. But then I filmed my German episode and they got to see a bit more. So you haven't actually seen this until now, really. It's, I think I only did like a row, maybe two, because these rows are taking me quite a while now. 
I can't remember how many stitches I have. It's a decent chunk though. Because I'm not sure if I actually do any more increases. I definitely don't do any more increases in the colour work. But there might be more increases afterwards. Because I know that's actually quite common that you do a circular yoke with the colour work and do increases in there where you evenly increase as you're knitting in the round a few times. But after you finish the colour work, I know sometimes you do a raglan increase because that's what I've done for the steaked cardigan that I'm making, the Otra yoke cardigan. So I know it's a thing that happens sometimes, but I haven't read ahead. Now I know a lot of people say you should read the, you know, read through the entire pattern before um, starting, but I find that can be quite overwhelming because especially if it's a pattern that you're nervous about, if you're new to colour work or something, you just look at that chart and I think you just freak. So I think it's worth just take it one step at a time and I don't think there's any reason that you have to read ahead because if there's anything you should know before you start something well then it should have been at the start right like I read everything in a pattern but it's very rare that I'll sit down and read the whole thing beginning to end before I start knitting no no but I'm sitting down Obviously, I'm back in my living room because I decided I didn't want to film. I think this is cozier for me. I'm not sure if it's better for you. You can see me knit, so that's the important thing. Uh, but I'm about to watch the latest Knitting Traditions podcast because I just sat down and was like, oh, I'm going to knit. And I was like, what shall I watch? And then I saw she'd released her new video. Um, episode 18 is the one I'm about to watch. Easter Knitting, it's called. So I'm going to watch that while knitting away on my dark water sweater. And I think once I've watched that, it's about an hour long, then I'll probably do some chatting and knitting because I think by then I would have recovered a bit because I've talked a lot today. But... And I'm just getting ready to watch the Bahrain Grand Prix. I do enjoy Formula One, I know. Um, it's only a recent thing for me. It's been a big thing in my family for a while, but I never got into it. But I'm going to keep working on my dark water sweater because <laughs> I'm not kidding when I said I made myself panic when I filmed my latest podcast episode of 
realizing I've only got about two weeks to get this jumper done and I'm still on the yoke. Still on the color work and I'm only about, I'm not even halfway through yet. I don't know, I've just been going really slowly with it. But so that's what I'm gonna be working on for most of today. And just thought I'd check in quickly now. Doing a really boring row. I hate it when I've got to work a row of long floats. It's not that I don't like, like I mind catching my floats, it's fine. I don't know, I just, I like it when I get to switch every two to three stitches. I, I find I knit quicker and don't have to worry about anything. But, so I'll be watching the Grand Prix and then I'll check in again and hopefully have some decent progress to show. I've already got a bit more than when I filmed yesterday, which should all be part of the same video. I think I did maybe two or three extra rows. So I've got a nice arrow design there now. My tension hasn't always been the best, but I think it will block out. I think it looked quite nice actually. Not perfect, but it will do. Well, that was an exciting race. Nobody panic. I'm not going to talk about Formula One because I know, well, I don't know, but I would assume that a lot of people aren't interested. Though, you know, you could be like me and my mama be really into knitting and also Formula One. But just in case you're not, this is, I'm not gonna talk about it. Anyway, so I did manage to get quite a bit of knitting done. How many rows did I do? Like five maybe during that? Maybe a bit more, less? couple of rows either way and decent rows though I did <laughs> within the last few laps uh, of the of the race I had to put my knitting down because it was just it was too exciting so I think it was for the last like three four laps and how many minutes would that have been anyway so I had to put my knitting down and then when I picked it back up again I noticed I'd made a mistake <laughs> I only had to go back about like 30, 40 stitches, but I was like, good that I stopped when I did, because otherwise I would have been undoing a lot of knitting. But I'm currently on a good row. So I mentioned just before that I don't like when I, it's not, I, I, I don't mind catching my floats, but I find I knit quickest with color work when I don't have to catch my floats. And I'm currently on a row row what did I just do there I'm currently on a row where I don't have to catch my floats didn't even knit that stitch just slipped it beeps and so I find it's a, I'm a bit quicker with this but color work just takes longer uh, I'm okay with that I don't there's some things where I expect myself to knit quickly. With vanilla kind of socks, like the ones I showed recently, using the Opal yarn, the Hundertwasser yarn, those I kind of expect to do quickly because I don't really have to think about it. There's no pattern. It's usually just 60 stitches as I'm going around and it's only really the heel, well, the cuff, the heel, the toes that slows me down a bit because you're not just knitting the whole time you actually have to you know do something but I think I like knitting socks because it's split so nicely into different sections and you know you've got the cuff to get you going and then oh you just knit for a while after that then you've got the heel to slow you down a bit again but it also just gives you a bit of variety while knitting, which is nice. But now that I've finished my vanilla socks, I was really desperate to start more, and I'd mentioned in the podcast anyway, the next socks I was hoping to cast on. Though I hadn't, I'd planned on casting them on pretty much that day anyway, and I did, I did start them yesterday. But I kind of worked on them quite a bit today, and I wasn't meant to. I'm meant to be focusing on this. <laughs> 
because I know once the color work is done, this is going to go by quite quickly. But the color work is like 51 rows or something. So that's a, a decent amount. I think that's the most color work I've ever done. I think for the... I haven't got it here. The Ultra Yoke cardigan, my steaked project. I think that was a 25, maybe like 30 row color work. So this is long. Longest I've ever done. And obviously also with fingering weight because this is my first fingering weight jumper. First one I started, I obviously then very soon afterwards started the Ultra Yoke one. And I've already got so many more that I want to do. But a, a normal kind of fingering weight jumper always takes quite a while. But then with the color work, it goes even slower. But that's okay. I do find with a lot of knitting, not just with color work, I all of a sudden will just kind of sort of lose interest, but if I'm just not in the right mood, that's why I like having a lot of different projects because sometimes I just, I don't know if it's the pattern, the color of the yarn, the feel of the yarn. Sometimes I just look at a project and I go, no, it's not happening today. And it's hard when with a test knit, for example, where sometimes you don't have the luxury of saying, ah, I won't work on it today because you've got a deadline. And I have done some test knitting where <laughs> It was a bit terrifying because obviously it, it's it's hard because as a test knitter you're doing something for free and even though you're getting the pattern at the end and I've had it many times that I've test knitted and I never actually got the pattern at the end. That final copy was never sent out and for the most part I don't really care because I don't know, it's not often that I'll actually re-knit something, but it is frustrating when your work just hasn't been recognized, but I find it really bad when I've had, well, I've, I've never had an issue with not finishing something. I think there was once that I couldn't finish a test knit because I couldn't even start it because I didn't have the needles. I just couldn't find them. I was in Austria and that needle size, all the ones that are like a quarter, three quarter millimeter ones. So like right now I'm working with 3.75s. Before I bought this Knit Pro interchangeable kit, I, I didn't have them. And so I was in Austria, needed to find these needles and everyone just looked at me and was like, oh, well here are 3.5s. And I was like, but that's not what I need. And they just didn't get it. And I have found that it's quite different um, in Austria, when it comes to knitting, yarn weights aren't really a thing. People will talk about, oh yeah, that's sock yarn. But that's not so much to do with the weight, it's more what you use it for. And then it's also, you use whatever yarn you want to. So if a pattern calls for Aran weight, you then would just, you know, swatch or just play around a bit to then create the fabric that you want for that yarn which is a good skill to have but I just I, I, I don't know why that's come about so anyway it was just couldn't find those needle sizes so I had to contact her and said look I can't I'm sorry but I can't test knit this for you um, and she was nice about it but I have had it before that people in the test knitting group were literally told if you don't finish this on time I expect you to pay the cost of the pattern which I think is a bit extreme. Now it could be that, I don't know, I feel like even if someone was then just, you know, hadn't planned things properly and was like, yeah, I just can't do it or I don't feel like it. While you are offering them a pattern for free, what, a pattern in the UK, you're paying anywhere from somewhere like one to two pounds up to maybe 12, 15 for some of the more expensive ones where they typically would then have different pricing points where people who can afford it, you know, maybe they can pay a bit more and people who are on a tighter budget would pay less and still have the pattern be accessible to them. So, whoa, 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 whoa. No, it's right, it's right. I thought I did this wrong. 
But it's still not that much money if a test knitter doesn't end up finishing for you. And then asking them to pay for the cost of the pattern, I think is a bit extreme. Now, I'm not saying that there might not be scenarios where that makes sense. It's just, from what I've seen so far, it wasn't okay. <laughs> I always feel a bit weird talking about this. It's like in my podcast episode when I was talking about the issues I was having with the Caitlin Hunter pattern, and it's always a bit terrifying if you openly talk about you know Caitlin Hunter is a big knitwear designer and while I'm not trying to it wasn't meant to be trash talk or anything it's always a bit terrifying that you know you're putting something on the internet I was just being honest about my experience with knitting the East Gold sweater but people can potentially get nasty with it I haven't had anything like that, but the video's only just gone live, so <laughs> we'll see if anything happens. But I really just tried to share my experience and was like, mm, I wasn't happy with that. And, you know, sharing that so other people can, you know, make their own decisions about it. I'm not telling people don't buy from her because of my experience. I know there's been other issues with Caitlin Hunter, which I sort of got into in the podcast but I decided to edit that out because it was just it got too messy and confusing because I couldn't really make my point properly so I kind of just left it out but please do know if you've seen that video and you're a bit like oh why didn't she talk about this I made the choice to cut it out because it just got confusing and messy because I don't really know the situation and I don't want to then put misinformation out there which is just not fair on anyone especially sort of the victims who've been suffering by some of the things that have happened if you don't know what I'm talking about uh, probably best to check online I found out about it from other people on Instagram just my hair again. Delicious. But it's often quite hard when something happens on the internet, like on Instagram, if you don't see it from the beginning and you catch sort of the end of it, there's a lot of information now missing unless people have, you know, saved certain screenshots, uh, like taken screenshots of Instagram stories and stuff. So I'm trying to piece together the story and it's just... <laughs> It was just getting really confusing and I still don't really know what's going on. But I I know enough about it to kind of go, I'm currently not buying any of Caitlin Hunter's patterns until I understand the situation better and can kind of figure out if I do or don't want to support her going forward. But for now, I'm like, I don't need to buy more patterns anyway. None of the newer ones that she's released have kind of, you know, immediately drawn me to them. So I'm like, okay, it's just, you know, I don't have to buy patterns from people. And if there's, you know, stuff going on, I'd rather take a step back, do some research around it, and then I can always buy them later if I find, you know what, I don't actually think there is a reason not to support her. And so I'm not at a stage yet to say anything about that, so... Like I said, currently not buying from her, but I don't know the full situation, so I don't know about any of that going forward. But we'll see, and I'll probably maybe talk about it in a future video. But it is upsetting, but also... It's the world we live in, isn't it? Where no matter what you're interested in what your hobbies are, what you do for your job, you can't escape. Well, racism, sexism, all the problems in the world. And I know a lot of people, and I, I do this in some ways, you know, knitting is an escape for me, but I'm never gonna let it be an escape to the point where I'm just going to sit by as other people are being hurt. That's not... I'm not about that life. That all got very serious. 
but it's always interesting. I like filming these videos because I don't really plan topics. Sometimes I have things I sort of want to talk about, but I just treat it as if I'm, you know, got some friends over and I'm just sitting and knitting and having a chat about things, which is why I've still got the interviews for the Formula One stuff running in the background. Obviously, I have no idea what they're talking about, especially with everyone wearing masks. You can't even read lips anymore. But so I'm occasionally kind of just looking at that. Not that I really should just turn it off because I'm getting nothing from this other than just being like, oh, yeah, look, there's Lewis Hamilton. And oh, look, there's Bottas and there's whoever, whoever else. Currently, it's a this is exciting, sort of, but also terrifying. They were talking about, this is, this isn't really Formula One talk because I'm going to link it to uni. So please allow it. Please bear with. Please don't leave me. <laughs> they were talking about that this is the first year that they've got someone racing. I think he was born in the year 2000. And a lot of the commentators are just like, I feel so old. This is terrifying. And that's how I felt teaching at uni the first time we had undergrads turn up who were born in the year 2000. And I remember exactly where I was in the year 2000. We had like special assemblies and stuff at school because, you know, it was an exciting time. And well, it, it really, it, it was really the first time that I, I felt sort of old. Like I already had it with some other students that I was teaching that you'd make certain references to things and they'd just look at you and be like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I have that a lot, mainly because I know TV shows and celebrities and stuff from a variety of different countries because of everywhere that I've lived. So there's a lot of things I know that other people don't. <laughs> just because of, you know, where I grew up all over the world. But then I also have it that... I really get along with my parents. I love spending time with them. And I do sort of take an interest in what they're interested in. Doesn't mean I love everything that they love. Definitely not. But it is kind of interesting and I listen to my parents for the most part. I like to think I listen. <laughs> and so there is just some stuff that you just kind of pick up, like 80s music and stuff like that. And then also because my brother was born in the 80s, there's certain things that he grew up with and was interested in. And being the younger sister, you know, I always loved kind of watching my brother play video games and things like that. And it was the only time he let me near him. <laughs> Teenage boys, I tell you. Hated. He hated having a little sister when he became a teenager. And so it was only when he played video games in the evening and certain other times that he kind of let me be nearby as long as I was quiet. I wasn't allowed to say anything. Um, though he did occasionally let me, like sometimes I did just kind of talk and, you know, would ask questions about what he's playing and and that he would allow as long as I was also praising how well he was playing. <laughs> but so there's a lot of stuff from my brother that I kind of know, video game wise, but also other things. And so I do have it quite often when I've been teaching that I've referenced certain things and people are just like, I don't know what you mean. Or when I've worked with people who were also born kind of in the 80s around the time my brother was, that they'll often just be like, I wouldn't expect someone born in early 90s to know this. And I'm like, I have an older brother. <laughs> that is why. But it is weird. The It shouldn't matter what year someone is born, but as soon as you hear, oh yeah, I was born in the year 2000. But now we've of course got a, you know, year 2001, year 2002, and it's just, it's terrifying to be all like, are you sure you're allowed at uni? <laughs> are you sure you're 18? <laughs> oh, terrifying. It's also fun just to hear how the language starts to change. Some of the words where I'm, once again, just feel really old because slang and stuff does change. Anyway. But like I said before, progress on the sweater is slow going with fingering weight. 
I wasn't, I'm going to be honest, I didn't really enjoy the first part of the color work. The starting with the ribbing for the neck and then kind of just the short rows and stuff. I, I really enjoy that. That's one of my favorite things with jumpers. This is why I have an issue with wanting to cast on so many new things. But when I started the color work, I was so excited because I've done quite a bit of color work now, but all the color work I've done has been for, you know, mittens or socks or the color burst sweater, which is actually hanging up there. I was taking pictures yesterday, I think. But it's all been big, quick kind of color work. I haven't done a color work yoke that's this big before with so many stitches, but then also so many rows. Because even, like I said, the Otra Yoke cardigan didn't have such a long color work repeat. And that one had a much, much smaller kind of pattern. So I don't think I ever had to catch any floats for that pattern, which, like I said, I enjoy because I knit so quickly. But so I got through that quite quickly and with this one the way that it starts is really slow where you just occasionally get like one stitch, then two stitches, back to one stitch. And now I'm finally in the fun bit. But it just took quite a while to get here. But now that I'm here, I'm already starting to plan the Jennifer Steingast patterns I want to make. Originally when I saw the knit along had been announced I saw the timeline 30th of January until the 10th of April I believe it is and I was like oh yeah I can totally knit like two sweaters in that time. Could have if I wasn't knitting on anything else but considering what I'm like I'm now panicking about just getting this one done. <laughs> oi oi oi. The good thing is, obviously, well, maybe not obviously, depends what you believe in and where you live, but Easter is next weekend, so uni's closed, I think, from the 1st of April, not that I'm able to go in, but because uni's closed, oh, what have I done here, I've made a mess. But because uni's closed, that's kind of the way that the department of the university tells us if uni's closed, you should also not really be working. So I'm probably actually going to take proper time off during Easter. I've been in need of it. I've been so tired. It's been a lot going on, not just work stress, but also equality, diversity issues within our department, which is never great both for my, what I've been experiencing, but also what other students have been experiencing. And I can handle, if I face discrimination, much better than if someone else faces it. I, I guess it's kind of like a control thing that if I'm going through it, I can actively do something about it and act. Whereas if someone tells me about something they've gone through, if you then want to act on their behalf, you obviously need their permission. And some people just don't want that, which is completely fair. But so I then just kind of end up sitting in this kind of misery, if you will. It's just not, not fun. As in like equality, diversity issues are not fun at all. So there's just been a lot going on. Obviously, the whole stuff with the pandemic and stuff still isn't fun. I don't think it's ever going to be fun. <laughs> but I, I've got a routine with the lockdown and everything. I prefer that to when we've been opening and closing things again. I just, I, I'm just in desperate need of a break is what I'm trying to say. So we'll allow myself to have time off of Easter, which means I've got quite a few days where I can literally just knit and not do anything else. So, let's see if I can actually get this done now. But I am hoping. I've got a couple. It's currently 6.30. So I should be able to still get quite a bit of knitting done today. I do need to cook myself dinner. 
but then I've got a couple of hours this evening. I have completely ignored my household chores this weekend because yesterday I spent time recording my English episode, my German episode, uh, and talking to friends and family and stuff, which I normally do. And then also had the qualifying round that I was watching. Then today I had the race, talking to a friend this morning. So, and editing the podcast episode. So currently I like to spend the weekend kind of getting my apartment back to a good tidy place so that, you know, stress, anxiety levels are under control because everything's tidy and clean. But I've kind of ignored it. I did empty the dishwasher and dishes, did the dishes and extra things like that and cleaned my kitchen yesterday. But there's laundry that's been drying since I think Thursday, which is definitely dry now and needs to be put away. I also need to vacuum clean. So who knows? Maybe while my, I'm thinking about making a curry. So maybe while that's cooking away on the stove, I'll do some quick cleaning and tidying. That's often how I've been doing things now. Like sneaking in certain bits of tidying. My favorite thing has been putting on the kettle for a cup of tea, so boiling some water. And in the meantime, I'll empty the dishwasher, load the dishwasher, put away dishes that I've done that are dry already. Oh, the things you do as an adult to (laughs) trick yourself into cleaning. (laughs) Oh, I hope it's not just me. But I probably need to cook dinner now, actually. I don't like eating too late. I don't know why. I often find Europeans do enjoy eating late, but I quite like having my dinner at sometimes five o'clock even, but I don't like eating really after. Any time after seven makes me unhappy, but if it's after eight, I typically just won't have dinner anymore because it's, I just find it's too late. So, so much talking, I need to stay hydrated. I'm going to go make dinner and afterwards probably sit down and knit some more and I might just film a bit of it and then just have a last little check-in for this for this video so it's kind of just two days worth of knitting but I'm hoping the next few videos I'll actually you know film shorter clips uh, talking about a few things and stuff and have it over multiple days instead of having a lot on Saturday a lot on Sunday like I've kind of had two for this video yes time for dinner Well, time to cook dinner.